Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our council meeting for October 26, 2021. You see there before you, council, a, um, we have the agenda for today all crafted. There is nothing outside the agenda, so I'm going to call for a motion, please, to adopt the agenda. Moved by Councillor Lane and seconded by Councillor Rice. All in favor? Aye. And those opposed? And that is carried. The first item for business will be... We begin today's public council meeting by respectfully acknowledging the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as the ancestral homelands of many diverse populations of indigenous peoples, including the Biotech, who have contributed to 9,000 years of history on the island of Newfoundland. Today, this province is home to diverse populations of indigenous and other peoples. We acknowledge with respect to diverse histories and cultures of the Mi'kmaq, Inuit, and Innu, and we have the honor of, the, uh, of this beautiful land together as we strive for collective healing and true reconciliation. Council, you see the October 19th, 2021 minutes, next item on the agenda. And I'm looking for, please, for initially errors or omissions before business arrives. Okay, hearing none, can I please get a motion to adopt the minutes? Moved by Councillor Locke, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All in favor? And those opposed? Motion carried. Business arising, please. And please quote the item number either in the action report or the minutes. Thank you very much, Ms. Mullins. Good job on the minutes from last meeting. Council, let's move on to the next part of the agenda. I'm still getting used to this tablet. Sorry, folks. Um, no proclamations, no correspondence. Uh, invoices for approval. We're gonna start with the Corporate and Economic Development Committee and Councillor Locke, please. Thank you, Your Worship. I too am getting used to this <laughs> tablet here. All right, first for us are the invoices for council approval. Um, you can see that we have, uh, 25 listed there for a total of uh, $1,221,340.31. And like I said, there's uh, two dozen plus one there, just to highlight a few there. Uh, you can see the Municipal Assessment Agency is for $67,613. Uh, this is a professional independent property assessment agency that provides uh, the City of Mount Pearl uh, annual assessments and also to most municipalities within Newfoundland and Labrador. And the Municipal Assessment Agency, or Worship, manages all assessment appeals for property owners, both uh, residential and commercial. And the City of Mount Pearl spends $271,000 annually for this service, and it's billed quarterly, and that's what you see here today, Your Worship, at $67,613. Another is the tipping fees um, for September 21, and they come in at $57,189.92. In the month of September, we, uh, we sent 754.84 tons to Robin Hood Bay for a total cost, as I said, of 57,189.92 cents. This included 633 tons of garbage, 63 tons of bulk garbage and yard waste, and 57 tons of recycling. And I spoke to this at our last public meeting, Your Worship, you may remember, when we were talking about uh, um, the need and the effort, the plans for our council as we move forward to try to increase the diversion rate. Uh, currently, we are at about approximately 13% uh, annually, and work, we're working with the MMSB to develop and deliver programming to support an increase in our diversion rate, because I think we talked last week, it's $82 a ton versus for garbage versus $22 a ton for recycling. So not only is it an environmental saving, it'll certainly be a, a cost saving to the residents. So there are a couple there that I, I just highlighted. And, uh, and I move that we accept these as presented, Your Worship. It is moved by Councillor Locke, seconded by Deputy Mayor Kiley. Any questions, Council? Great job, Councillor Locke, in providing some detail. Very Thank aptly you. put. I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. And those opposed? And motion carried. Thanks. Now we'll turn to the payment register and purchase card report. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so the payment registry for the period is between September 30th to October 21st, and was 2.2 million for uh, sorry, uh, 
$1,951.47. And the purchase card report of the month of September totaled uh, $238,754.09. Um, just a few um, expenses uh, that we would like to just uh, consider mentoring uh, that we're going to mention right now. $300,739.94 was paid to the City of St. John's for August water consumption and tipping fees. Along with that, uh, $2,400 was paid to the known B4. Uh, that's an IT security provider that supports the city with an antivirus software, including email phishing, notifications, and reporting basically functionalities and the like. Um, the payment registry, you know, also includes return deposits for those who ran into municipal and federal elections. Um, so you'll see many of the $250 deposits for that were returned here. Um, additionally, uh, the purchase card, uh, also known as P card report is also included in the month of September, which includes all purchases made on the P card for the month. Um, and the city had been actively increasing our usage of the P cards in 2021. And this method really follows the same oversight as the traditional accounts payable process, you know, thresholds for approval, auditing and the like, uh, while improving the timelines of our payments. Um, and so we report on that monthly just as an FYI. So that's the payment registry, Your Worship. Any questions, Council? Because it is for the information of Council and the, uh, the public. Councillor Fry, please. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just one question. Um, there's one here for accounts payable for St. John's Municipal Council for $48,338.44. Just wondering what that was for. Thank you, uh, Councilor Fur. I would refer to our, um, our director uh, in regards to that payment for information. Uh, director Pittman. Director Pittman, sorry. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at, is that on the purchase card report or is that on the- Accounts payable, I think. Accounts payable, um, sorry, the P card report though. Just looking, or the purchase card, report. sorry, the purchase card report or the payment registry. So St. John's actually takes um, P cards for some of the services that we provide. So that's likely in relation to either a balance for tipping fees or a balance for, um any any of our regional services so it's likely a payment that we made for tipping fees for recycling or garbage one of our purchases i remember in august was yeah. it was it roughly that value so i'd have to look back at the purchase card report and see uh, sorry the invoices and see but st john's accepts p cards so as we're trying to push everything through p cards for uh transparency and also efficiency um that's likely what that cost is for Thank you, Director. It just struck me out when it said St. John's yeah. Municipal Council. As Absolutely. To <laughs> um, and it's luck, thankfully, they are accepting some in some specifics um, P cards, which just makes the payment process so much faster. Yeah, that's billed every month based on the actual tonnage that's registered as the city trucks, I guess, pass over the way scales out there. Yeah. Um, my question was the payment uh, through Council Payables to US Bank. For three hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars. Just curious what that one was. Um, I'm also going to defer that to uh, Director Pittman. Uh, no, it's a great question. And U.S. Bank actually is um, is through TD Bank, so that's our P card. So that's our P card payment for the month uh, prior. The three hundred fifty three thousand dollars. That means three hundred fifty three thousand dollars flowed through our P cards for that month. So U.S. Bank, for the information of the public and council, is who provides our access cards or our purchase cards for the city of Mount Pearl. So that's under our banking contract. Thank you very much. That makes sense. Uh, Councilor Mantle, please. Uh, just a quick question with reference to the, I know it's for the $250 for uh, refund for our sign deposits. I know there's a little sign down around uh, Park Avenue there on Dunn's Bridge. Mm. So does everybody do... Those signs, if your signs are left up, you don't get back your 250. Is that right? Or they need, sorry, director, I think. Director I only noticed Collins it this afternoon. That. Maybe Dr. Yeah. Collins. Maybe. I spoke to the, I guess, the candidate this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that sign has been changed from a election sign to a realty sign. In saying that, I'm having a, an inspector also follow up just to make sure that the proper permitting is in place because it can't just be left here without a permit. I thought it was still a lecture. And it has to meet our sign regulations. It has to meet our sign regulations. Our, 
But I spoke to the gentleman this afternoon. Thank you. Any final thoughts before the deputy mayor moves on to the next item? Yeah, your worship, right here. Oh, Councillor mm -hmm. Rice, please. So just for a point of clarification, uh, so all P cards or transactions that come through are signed off by the directors. Am I correct in saying that? This final, the final payoff, I guess. So, so uh, clarification uh, of that, right? So yeah, absolutely, Councillor Rice, I'm gonna defer that to uh, Director Pittman so she can give you some clarity on that too. Yep. So the P card purchases go through the same procedural oversight as any of our transactions. So for example, three uh, quotes are required for purchases over $2,000. Thresholds are automatically set. If the value exceeds the managerial authority, then it would go to the director for approval. Okay. So thank it you. all follows the exact same accounts payable process. Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, let's move on. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Director Pippin. Um, so the next item um, is a motion, in fact, and uh, we're going to just, uh, we have one low income tax referral for approval. Um, and that is the value that is of the value of $1,756. And of course, these are done in accordance with the city's policy on low-income earning, um, and certainly has met the criteria for approval. So, of course, the information is not made available with regards to privacy reasons, um, and so we're just going to be talking about the amount today. And so, I'm looking for an emotion, um, and I would like to move that this um, this uh, tax deferral be approved today. Second. Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Kiley, seconded by Councillor Locke. That account number six five seven two. Uh, be deferred in accordance with our policy. Any questions, Council? And hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. And those Aye. opposed? Motion's carried. And that's the end of that part of the agenda for that committee. Thank you very much to the Deputy Mayor and Councillor Locke. Mm -hmm. The Community Development Committee report. And today we're going to see Councillor Antle is going to take the, the first. Your Worship, I'll take the uh, first one. Thank you. And that has to do with the uh, Tele Tennis going to happen again this year. You're going to give me a run around, are you? I'd like everybody to <laughs> know that, as per usual, I will not be participating. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, this is the 93rd running of the Tele 10, and it starts on Sunday, October 31st, and it runs from 8 till 10 a.m. And they're looking for marshals. And I think a couple of councillors are already working on the uh, to make sure that everything runs smoothly through the city of Mount Pearl. And that's everything from me, Your Worship. I'll now Thank pass you. on to Councillor Lane. Yeah, um, just before you do, I just want to make sure um, Director Pittman communication will be fairly robust later on, probably starting Friday of this week uh, through our usual channels. Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Councillor Lane, please, for the rest of the report. Um, so we have a development permit list from October 12th to the 22nd, 2021. Uh, the committee recommends that the following development permit be approved as presented for the period of October 12th to the 22nd. Um, so we have two items here. Uh, the first we discussed last week, which is 23 trucks and places opening a child care facility in their home. Uh, so that's very exciting. Um, and we also have a building extension and new access being built um, on Black Marsh Road, uh, 930 to 940. Um, and I'm going to move this. It is moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Antle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And those opposed? Again, that motion is carried. Thank you much. Okay. And next we have a building and occup occupancy permit listing from October 12th to the 22nd, 2021. The committee recommends that the building permits issued for the period of October 12th to the 22nd, 2021, showing a total construction value of $1,541,150 to be approved, and further that the occupancy permit list be accepted as presented. Um, so just to highlight um, a couple of things, we have a lot of renovations going on, um, new, new fences going up. Um, and we actually have a new house being built as well, um, valued at $400,000. Mm -hmm. It is moved by Councillor Lane. And again, second by Councillor Antle. And we are moving the building construction, residential, building construction, commercial, and occupancy permits. Council, any questions further to this? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? And we have another motion carried. Thank you. Now to the uh, final committee report, Infrastructure and Public Works. Councillor Rice, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so the committee met uh, on October the 12th. 
uh, via a virtual meeting at 11.30 a.m. to 1.30. I think it ran a bit longer than that. We had a lot of items to address. <laughs> it was really well, a well-ran meeting and went really well. So the committee is bringing forward for discussion and direction. Uh, tops of road, storm, sewer, and outfall upgrades, M uh, uh, I12178, change order number eight. Uh, the background, this would be uh, the contract was awarded to Dexter Construction, uh, limited for the bid of uh, $861,754.92, HST included. The following change order was submitted for consideration. Uh, because of the work on the outfall, uh, the change order number eight, the equipment and materials we had to remove, uh, reestate the four foot high fence at uh, number 897 Topsa Road. Total cost to remove this fence and reinstate the fence would be uh, $4,496.50, uh, sorry, uh, plus HS, uh, HST included. The removal was required to accommodate the construction of the new storm outfall, which ran right by that fence. So we had no choice only to take it down and put it back. Uh, it was right in the area of the, I guess, the property owner of that fence. So the recommendation would be uh, public uh, infrastructure and public work committee committee recommends the above change order for the approval. Uh, please note that the existing budget can accommodate and uh, the anticipated change order for this change order. So we're recommending to approval. I so move. It is moved by Councillor Rice, second by Councillor Fry. Any comments, Council? Seems fairly routine, and unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, with all the heavy equipment that's probably down in that valley below uh, Farrell Drive, a lot of uh, fencing and the like had to be removed. Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. And those opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to pass this next uh, part over to Councillor Fry. Councillor Fry. Thank you, Councillor Rice. Uh, for the information of public, we just have some updates. Um, of course, Public Works is one of our busiest departments here, so there's always lots of updates to report. Bulk garbage pickups are ongoing and they will continue as long as the weather permits. Those are on Mondays by appointment only. Road maintenance, signage, garbage collection and recycling is ongoing. And now there's preparation for the winter season, which is ongoing. So the loaders are undergoing service. The trucks like the plows and the salt are serviced. Some new equipment in the fleet this year, which is part of our asset management that we've been planning for. We have two new single axle medium duty, duty trucks to improve maneuverability on narrower streets. And we have four new tandem axle heavy duty. And there's a picture here in your kit and they look, they look great and ready for to tackle the upcoming winter, whatever that brings. Mm -hmm. Some capital projects updates. We have uh, for construction, we have crack ceiling, which has been completed. We have line painting completed for the fall. Badcock place upgrading is completed. Uh, the temporary power poles are still in place, but that's pending Newfoundland power work. Asphalt and concrete repairs are substantially completed. Topsail road storm outfall and upgrades. The road work is complete and the total project will be finished by the end of October. City hall upgrades, roof work is close to substantial completion and waiting on air handling unit delivery. The St. David's smart accessible playground which we're all excited to see. The site work is scheduled to start this month and playground equipment and rubberized surface uh, next year in 2022. Mm. Old Pacenta Road asphalt renewal has been completed and the Old Pacenta Road pedestrian underpass repair, the, the guide rail work is to start the week of October the 25th. Uh, this week a subsequent traffic diversion plan underway mm -hmm. and will be communicated publicly. And Topsail Road, Corson Drive, Clyde Avenue asphalt renewal has been completed. And finally, our facility maintenance. We have the field lighting maintenance is ongoing. The storm damage from Hurricane Larry, the repairs are ongoing. And winterization of seasonal facilities has begun. So we are ready for winter. Or should I knock on wood? Ooh. <laughs> and that's it for our... Uh, our infrastructure upgrade. Councillor Locke has a question. Yeah, just a question, Your Worship. Um, I'm noticing here the storm damage from Hurricane Larry mm -hmm. and our repairs are ongoing. I'm just wondering if we can get a summary of, of what the repairs were and the magnitude, order of magnitude. Mm -hmm. well, if Director Antle could, could speak to that. Director Antle, please. Uh, thank you, Councillor Locke. Uh, the extent of repairs is uh, varied. 
Uh, lots of the repairs were to do with our trees that we had to clean up and repair on the trails, especially. In facilities, we had some damage that was associated with uh, a phase loss on the power at the summit. And that involves some delicate systems that we're now in the midst of replacing and upgrading as a result of that damage. So most of what you're seeing here from the facilities update is to do with that follow through. So uh, I, I probably won't give you or bore you with the details of all the names of all the various systems, but the systems had a number of impacts that we had to go through our service contractors to replace. And we're also in the midst of uh, building in a system that will prevent in the future if we get a phase loss, which is unusual, and a number of facilities across Northeast Avalon that actually experienced the or Hurricane Larry had the same thing. Uh, that's unusual. So we're trying to put in place put in place systems that would actually prevent that in the future. So we experience that it'll shut our system down before it experiences that high voltage system that came through. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. Question for Public Works uh, from this chair um, to the director. Um, what's the status and progress related to the water tank on the Kenlow Hill North Heights? Uh, we're in the midst of that, uh, Your Worship. Uh, we've actually drained the tank today. Uh, the cleaning of the tank has been mostly done. And we're in the process actually right now. The work has, at this point in time, and I, I want to make sure we touch wood, it's gone according to plan. Uh, and we're in the midst right now of uh, refilling the tank. So uh, the work has been proceeding According. So the work was completed, I think, uh, a little bit sooner or within the, the shortest end of the schedule forecast, I believe. Uh, the work itself, the, the planning portion of this was ongoing for a long time. So we've done a number of tests on the system to bring us to this point. Today, the contractor that's actually doing some of the maintenance repair activity is in town. They're from out of the province. Uh, most of the concrete grouting underneath the tank is now being complete. The tank was drained, it's been inspected, uh, it's being cleaned and it's being refilled and there'll be a full report to our engineering and public works department to advise us what they found. At this point, what they found, what I understand is it's in very good condition. Any service interruptions that you can report on? Mm -hmm. uh, we're not aware of any service interruptions other than we had a switch over from the tank to our pump system. We're not aware of any interruption. Well, so far so good. So please pass on our congratulations to staff and uh, uh, that's gone, I think, uh, superbly, to be frank. And I'm glad to see that uh, there's no interruption in water service delivery. Thank you. I also have a question for- Yeah, Deputy Mayor, please. Um, it is the season to be thinking about snow, I believe. It's, it's such a cold day today. Uh, I'm just wondering if, uh, if, if Director Angel, you can give uh, more of an idea of what it means to have a, a, a two new single axle with regards to removability on narrow streets. I know that had been, um, a few residents have talked about snow clearing and specifically to those smaller streets and just wondering what that means and the impact it could have on, on, on some of those uh, areas. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Conner. Uh, when it comes to narrower streets in the city, uh, we've used, we call it our tandem axle heavy duty trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, they can maneuver, but they are large. They can actually maneuver those streets to improve maneuverability. And we've had some concerns raised by residents in the past. We've purchased in our fleet this year single axle trucks that are simply a smaller, we call it medium duty, mm -hmm. and allows the operator to maneuver the, the tighter, narrower cul-de-sacs, the smaller streets, and give more room. So we are, we are no, we're, we're a bit further away from either parked vehicles or curbs and what have you. And that allows us to have a safer operation primarily, and it gives us that smoother ability to be able to deliver that service. So it's, it's an improvement, we feel. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I think a follow-up to your question maybe as well, as, as Councillor Fry has pointed out, we are preparing now for winter season. Uh, towards about the middle of November or so, uh, we'll start bringing on partial night shift because we will be expecting in the late times then be freezing temperatures and we'll be, unfortunately, we'll be salting then. Uh, if it happens sooner, based on our monitoring of the forecast, we'll be also having some partial night shifts then as well. So this is what we call the shoulder season. Mm -hmm. So we are preparing and we'll be ready. I think we witnessed a little bit of snow late this morning too. Yeah. So it's coming and salting coming. is really important. These would be in the old days, these would be called salters for the most part. They're not generally expected to do the bulk of the work i don't think for uh, uh for snow clearing especially on cul-de-sacs where the loaders are 
um, have, I guess they're stronger and they're more maneuverable. Um, but I guess it gives you the flexibility, I guess, in adapting the salting and the delivery of that, uh, which will come sooner rather than later, because that's typically the first sign that when winter's here is when the salting has to get done to come back the ice. All good? Uh, yeah, just one, one follow up to that. Um, and, and in relation to the larger, uh, the, the tandem axles, the heavy duties, that that's not necessary to to increase, but it's it's in relation to ensuring we have and maintaining the service we have right now with regards to snow removal. Is that right? I think that's what Councillor Fly referred to. The the replacement vehicles, these are replacement of existing exactly. older machines. Okay. So there's no change in the fleet size. Uh, yeah. What we've done is we've changed some of the fleet configuration as we replace vehicles. So we've now got the two single axle medium duty trucks. So to the to the mayor's point, he's very correct in saying that we'll use these trucks for salting. That's their primary role. Uh, they have blades. Mm -hmm. So the smaller trucks have blades without wings that allows them to be more, more maneuverable. The wing is simply a, a wing on the side of the truck that allows it to plow more efficiently. Mm -hmm. The bigger trucks, the heavy duty trucks, will primarily be on the main arteries in the city, like Tops Road, Commonwealth Avenue. So those higher speed multi-lane roads need trucks that'll actually operate at vehicle speeds, at the normal vehicle traffic speed. And that's what they'll operate like. So that's those trucks are the main, I, I call them the workhorse of the fleet. Mm -hmm. They're the first ones to go out. <laughs> and the salt trucks, the mayor is right, they'll be the, the first response is salt. Great, thank you very much. Back to you, Councillor Fry. Uh, your worship. I'm sorry, Councillor Antle. No, no. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> Councillor Rice, sorry about you'll that. Get it. When you worship, you'll get it right eventually. Uh, well, uh, I, always just do. Want, I just want to add myself and Councillor Fry is, uh, I've been really pleased actually with the vision that uh, Director Antle and his team has had of putting a, uh, an asset replacement plan in place for 10 years. Just want to add that in there. It's, uh, I think it's a phenomenal uh, plan. We've had many discussions on it, and uh, <clears throat> it's you know it's it's you know equipment wears out, and especially snow clearing equipment. I mean, it gets broken pretty easily when you run into a curb or uh, or go over a bump or hump and stuff like that. I'm sure they're always working on it during the year, but I just want to say you know it's a great vision, and we're really pleased actually that you're doing it. And uh, I was really impressed when we when we had several discussions on it, and as you can see here, two I mean three brand new, but actually we got four tandem axles and two brand new single axles replacing the older ones. So we're always doing a yearly plan of replacing equipment. So in 10 years time, we won't be caught with a full replacement of all of our capital assets. So I think there's hats off to uh, to uh, Director Antle and his team. They're doing a phenomenal job. Just want to add that in there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are we finished with the committee report? And we are finished with our committee report for this evening. Thank you, Councillor Fry. Moving on to the round table to finish up the uh, our meeting here today. I'll start with Councillor Antle, please. Your worship, I don't have too much to talk about because I was away for two weeks. I had a nice little vacation. I enjoyed it very, very much. The only thing I'm going to talk about is the first thing is on uh, Monday night, November the 1st, we have our pumpkin parade, and you should all remember that. That's going to be a great function at St. David's Field, and I'm certainly going to attend. I noticed the past couple of days I got back, and I noticed on Facebook, all the homes in Mount Pearl that are decorated. If anybody has a chance to drive around Mount Pearl mm. to take a look at the homes, I think they're getting more and more and more getting decorated. They're phenomenal. If you got a chance to go out and take a look. Uh, yesterday, I happened to have a chance to go for a little walk, and I think we'd bring it up many, many times on the trails. You know, when you're walking your dog, please remember to pick up after your dog. With leaves falling on the ground now, I mean, you can certainly uh, uh, walk on the dog feces so if you pick up after your dog it'll be certainly appreciated and also on october the 30th uh, this sunday from two to four the solid rock wesleyan church down on park avenue have a trunk or treat so if you want to drop down they'll certainly be appreciated and that's everything for me your worship thank you councillor Antle. councillor rice please uh, thank you your worship uh, i just want to add in tomorrow uh, october 27th is our community supper which is every wednesday uh, going forward so looking at actually uh, eventually putting this event every two weeks, but I hope to keep it every week. Uh, myself and uh, Councillor Fry attended last uh, last Wednesday, and it was uh, it was a bit of a, uh, I guess I'd say well, a little bit of a breakdown of communication there for a little while. We had a very miserable night, uh, it was raining, so not too many, uh, I guess, uh, needy people got out to get those meals. So we 
we made a plan, I guess, and we all jumped in our cars and we delivered them. So, uh, which was really good. That's why we never got up to the opening of the, uh, I guess the uh, frost, was it up on the, it was Christmas the glacier. We never, we never made it that opening ceremony, but You'll it was, get it. which is fine. So tomorrow, October 27th, community supper would be at First United Church parking lot. Uh, we will be attending that one as well. It's from five to 6.30. Uh, that's the time uh, it usually runs every week. Uh, so hopefully we'll get that out to the airways and we get more people there as well. Uh, I also recommended probably a couple of signs where we're, I guess where we're back in the parking lots and areas, a lot of people don't know that the community truck is there. So I recommended we could make some signs up with community shop around to put them on the main streets. So we're just waiting to hear back now from, I guess, from the committee and group on what they recommend for that. Uh, so that's all for me, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Rice. And now I'm going to move over to Councillor Lane. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so I just have a couple of things here. Um, they're still looking for volunteers for the Tele 10, um, which is this Sunday, October 31st. So if anyone is free and willing to volunteer, you can contact the Mount Pearl Sports Alliance at 748-6489. Um, the Mount Pearl Blades are having a Tooney drive with proceeds going to the local food banks, and they have several drop-off locations set up around Mount Pearl for that. Um, I was happy to attend the 29th annual Christmas at the Glacier. Um, it was a great success, uh, like every year, and it was great to see so many attending and enjoying themselves. Um, so that was great. Um, and that's all for me. Well, thank you very much, Councillor Lane, and now Councillor Fry. It's hard to believe it's the end of October, you know, mm. when we're talking about Halloween. Um, but there are so many wonderful things, you know, in the city, just driving around at the different, uh, the, the, the amount of work that some of the residents put in to this for the kids. I mean, the house, the haunting on Whitley Drive is something worth seeing. So there, there are a few, there's one on Bab Crescent, Holden Street, LaSalle Drive and Burgess Avenue. And, you know, I, I just wanted to acknowledge them publicly because so much effort goes into this and it makes it really special for the kids. And, and that's what it's all about, you know, especially for Halloween. And uh, speaking of Halloween on the 30th at the library is a Halloween story time. So that's uh, October 30th, 1030 in the morning. And they're encouraging everybody to all the kids to wear their Halloween costumes. So it's something to do on, on, on the morning of the 30th. And residents can register by calling the library at 368-3603. And also for older kids or adults, shall we say, uh, at the library, there's an online trivia night on November the 24th. And that starts at 630. So there's something for everybody at the library. I also wanted to mention the uh, the hockey with a heart, the 2D drive. I think that's a great mm. event. Uh, you know, our 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 Mount Pearl Hockey Association do they used to do this every year, but they they would get together and they would go and knock on all the doors in the community and they just they just have a big blitz of a food drive. And now with COVID, they're not able to do that. So last year they came up with a very creative way of trying to still fill the shelves of the food bank and had the Tooney drives. So these hockey players are so enthusiastic. They can't wait to get out there with their buckets and collect toonies. So for anybody that's out and about, hopefully we'll get a good crowd because the food banks, you know, they is coming up to a busy season now. And, and this is a way of, of filling the shelves. The locations are the Glacier, St. Peter's Parish, the Salvation Army, Mary Queen of the World, Church of the Ascension, the Church of the Good Shepherd, Park Avenue Pentecostal Church, plus Sobeys, Coleman's, Walmart, and Marie's this year. So if anybody can't get out and about and would still like to make a donation, we encourage people to, if you can, to, you can e email the money transfer to administrator at mountpearlblades.com with the subject of food bank. So hopefully we'll have a great turnout and it's worth going out just to see the kids anyway, because they're just so excited about it. And it's great to encourage young people to get involved at a young age. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I, I was really disappointed to see that the lights on the tree for Courtney Lake in St. David's were missing. And this, like, this is just, it's, it's a senseless act. 
but it means so much to those involved. Like Courtney Lake went missing, what, three, four years ago now? I've lost track of how long. And every year their family gathers at Christmas time, just before Christmas, they have this tree done and they did this at their own expense to put the, to light the tree purple because that was Courtney's favorite, uh, favorite color. And this is a big deal to, you know, to remember her and this, it means a lot. And for somebody to come and take the light bulbs from that tree is really, really upsetting. So, you know, I, I don't know what it is that we can do about this, but I think we really need to, to find a way to combat this vandalism and this type of thing, because it's, it's, I've had enough of it. And I know a lot of our residents have as well. So I look forward to, to finding a resolution to that. And hopefully residents can look out for each other. I mean, if you're out and about and you see something, contact their municipal enforcement, uh, 748-1048-1058. And uh, just let, you know, just call them and, and, and if everybody works together, then we can make our, our city that much safer. And that's it for me, Your Worship. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Fry. Councillor Locke, please. Thank you, Your Worship. A couple of items here. Um, last week, of course, was small, small business week, and uh, hmm. I did manage to get down to the drop-in session that was held on Thursday, October 21st at the Soccer Hut. Uh, it was quite a lot of activity, is my understanding. I'm looking forward to our uh, upcoming committee meeting to get a, a summary of of, uh, of the turnout. Um, but we did have some, uh, many people turned out and uh, several, I was told, that were looking to open businesses in Mount Pearl. So it was successful in that regard. Um, last week, your worship as well, from the 19th to the 21st, I attended the uh, Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, Sustainable Communities Conference. Hmm. And in light of the all the... Uh, you know, the occurrences in the world, especially now we're seeing over in BC and California with this cyclone bomb that's hitting over there and the COP26 uh, climate summit that's starting this weekend in uh, Glasgow, Scotland. Um, it was a very timely uh, session. It's always timely when we're dealing with uh, with climate change and, and the impacts of that. So the sessions as always were uh, very informative, but I, I came away afterwards uh, feeling pretty good about the work that the city of Mount Pearl has been doing uh, in the regard of uh, climate change. Now, as I said before, um, we are always open to new ideas and we're, uh, we're moving forward. But um, one thing that they, that they emphasized, there was a lady that spoke from Singapore um, and what Singapore is doing there uh, in developing their city in nature. And of course, we're known for years as a city within a park. And uh, the goal by 2030 for Singapore <clears throat> is to have <clears throat> every resident in Singapore will be a 10 minute walk or 400 meters from a park. So they are, they have an aggressive campaign to do that. And again, you know, I commented to some of the participants that, you know, we have 60 kilometers of trailways here in the city of Mount Pearl. And I think we have, is it 80 playgrounds? Is, is my number off there probably a little too high? So we have, we have multiple playgrounds <laughs> and, and open spaces. And of course, uh, one of the presenters indicated that COVID in particular, right across North America, they saw the uptake in outdoor space. And of course, I know our community uh, development uh, staff, as well as people at IPW, we saw that, yeah. the need for, you know, uh, winter activities, and we groom the trails, and we're looking at buying another uh, groomer. Uh, but this lady from Singapore also spoke of the importance of trees. And again, I'm so delighted that uh, last year, the previous uh, term of council, we adopted an urban forestry plan. And they emphasized the importance of trees, not only from the environmental perspective, but from the mental health perspective again. And that was their whole goal of, of allowing uh, their residents within 10 minutes to get out in nature, just spending time in nature. And we got the beautiful water for river that we're, that we're aiming to develop over the next 25 years or so in our Find Your City plan. It does so much for mental health, for stress relieving and physical activity, uh, so it was wonderful to see. Um, I know uh, Councillor Rice mentioned about the asset management plan here at the city. And uh, again, I tooted our horn with that and how that's a small city relatively. We have a, a very uh, well-developed asset management plan, but a part of our asset management has to be our green infrastructure. And that's another message that came out. Yes, we talk about our pipes and our sidewalks and our traffic lights and stuff like that but the essential role that trees play. So they too are an important part of our asset management plan. 
So I'm delighted that we've committed to tree planting over the next number of years, and we're trying to do our part to meet Canada's part in uh, our carbon carbon reduction. So uh, overall, it was it was uh, it was fascinating. I just wanted to mention as well because in our uh, report tonight we talked about one of the permits was for the demolition of a building on Topsail Road at an estimated cost of $100,000. It was an interesting note. I think Vancouver has a bylaw in place where they require green demolition. So you can't go in traditionally and just beat all these buildings down. They systematically have to take down the building because their landfill won't accept it. So they, uh, they have incentives and bylaws where you have to reuse two by fours and lumber and windows and doors and stuff like that. And again, that's something that it's not, it's not uncommon to Newfoundland and Labrador. I know out where we have our cabin, uh, my wife and I were talking about this over the last six months, we watched old houses be systematically taken down. They didn't just go in with a wrecking ball. They removed the roof, they removed the board, they removed the, 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 the siding, they removed the windows. And we watched it over a period of four or five weeks where it was, and it was so cleanly done. So none of that, or most of that did not go to the landfill. So I think under the, the, the Vancouver's bylaws, I think 95% of it has to be recycled or reused, or that's the goal that they're shooting for. So all these neat initiatives that, um, uh, that I saw in this conference, we're doing many of these in the city of Mount Pearl. So uh, I have a lot of ideas I'm gonna bring back uh, to Deputy Mayor Kiley and our, our Corporate Services Committee. And I've also spoken to some of our other directors as well about some of the ideas that, uh, that were brought up there. And uh, <clears throat> the last thing I wanted to mention to me, uh, Your Worship, for me is uh, the death of uh, Sir David uh, Amos in, in the UK there a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Uh, the second uh, member of parliament uh, to be killed there since, since 2016. And, uh, you know, it was a sobering report when I read it because, uh, you know, we know, I know, well, my colleagues who have been on council for a while know, you know, the demands that this place is, uh, places on your personal life. And fortunately, we haven't had to deal with that level. But it struck home to me <clears throat> the importance of, and the power of language and proper language. And, and sometimes what you see on social media and the platforms, and people call them the keyboard warriors that get out. And, and some of the stuff that's, that's said about elected officials Mm. it's it's harmful it's damaging and 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 it can escalate uh people of a certain mindset to go that one step further and take these drastic terrible heinous acts that we saw in the uk so i just wanted to take the time you know to to remind folk that um you know we we my colleagues here stepped up to the plate because we want to do something to better our community it's certainly not for the money it's for the love of our community. And uh, I will speak with any resident, and I know my colleagues will as well, but it has to be done respectfully and carefully. And just keep in mind that language matters and some insightful language can lead to harmful consequences, which is what we saw of our, our colleague um, in the UK. So I just wanted to publicly announce that and certainly express my condolences to the family and certainly the colleagues of, uh, mm. of our fellow uh, uh, civil servant or public service servant there. So that's it for me, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor, I picked up on many of the things you said, but I would challenge this council to say, if we want to have a park within 10 minutes of every resident, I would ask you all to look at our city and think about what we heard during the election campaign and observed uh, that north of Topsail Road, I don't think really fits that. I believe there is a real imbalance between the play areas, uh, the parks, between that part of Mount Pearl versus the rest of Mount Pearl. And I would challenge council maybe through a strategic planning process um, to work and identify that there is land up there that's set aside for a park right between the Masonic and the upper ends of Larson uh, and LaSalle, uh, LaSalle Drive, I think it is. There's an opportunity there to serve our residents better, whether it's through uh, simply a play lens for families or through a, um, an economical lens uh, through many ways we can look at it, but I think there's a deficiency there. So I thank you for bringing up the Singapore example, Councillor. Um, and I'll just read that into the minutes, hopefully. And I'll turn now for the round table to Deputy Mayor Kiley. Whoops. Thanks, Your Worship. 
And uh, to support uh, Councillor Locke's uh, comments, it's, I'm I'm just always excited when we hear and we talk about sustainability in in those terms in relation to where we're living and how we're living. And uh, it's it's very promising that I'm hearing from all of my fellow councillors, uh, whether it's through the economic uh, side of things, community development, or even within public works, that sustainability has become front of mind. And um, it's very promising to hear that. You know, when we talk about asset, uh, similarly, this when we talk about asset management, when we're talking about developing green space, uh, when we're talking about uh, community development, I think, it just, it is very promising that we're all on the same page and, and our thoughts go to that and that we think about sustainability in such a wider concept because it's, um, sometimes we feel it's it's a matter of, well, once we get this done in a particular type of way with um, our economy or through just the bricks and mortar and we realize it's, it's sometimes an attitude and, and a shift in thinking and how we even start planning. So just wanted to say that uh, off the top, but, but um also, um, it's been quite a great couple of weeks, um, and I just wanted to focus on um, just sustainability in, in the form of supporting our, our local economy and small business week. Um, and in fact, last week we held a startup information session called Qu uh, Quick Start Your Business event last Thursday. I believe I kind of talked a little bit about it um, last time I was here, and I'm happy to say it was an absolute, as, as Councillor Locke had mentioned, it was an absolutely um, positive event. And we had about 20 participants drop by. Uh, and I had an opportunity to kind of go one by one to the different um, tables with um, with uh, my fellow counselors, as well as Fry and, and, and Councillor Lane, um, and others around just, you know, how are some of these organizations like the um, NLO, Newfoundland Labrador um, Organization of Women Entrepreneurs, you know, what was their uptake? How are they feeling? And they said, you know what, we had people that day connect with us, share information and have some great ideas of how they can start working um, and building their, their small business. Um, I've also had members from uh, the business Mrs. Kennedy said that this is the first time they've been out and about and being able to connect directly uh, to individuals um, that since COVID. And it's just really promising to hear that we had people there one on one connecting with individuals on the brick, you know, on, on everything from the business development plan, um, the, the, the economic side of things, and even just that mentorship piece um, when, when it comes to certain organizations um, and, and specific, you know, my, my, we think of the Paradise Mount, Tra uh, Mount Pearl Chamber of Commerce, and they did a lot of heavy lifting in, in Small Business Week and, and some great events. So it's just great to hear that and uh, to be a part of that and seeing that. Um, and when you think about it, 20, 20 people, that's not just 20 individuals, that's 20 ideas of a business, that's 20 ideas of um, what could grow into the staff, that what can go into um, some great work and, 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 and economic ideas for our community. Um, I also wanted to just talk about and, and think specifically Paradise Mount, Tra uh, Mount Pearl Chambers of Ca Commerce for their Buy Here Buy uh, 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 campaign launch. And it was absolutely phenomenal. We had an opportunity to look at that video with uh, um, a local resident, Keith Power, who just was featured in all sorts of exciting, fun ways um, through, through Paradise and Mount Pearl, you know, and it was really great. He did a great job with that. Um, and similarly, uh, no better time to be going to Christmas at the glacier and talk about small businesses. Um, but, um, and I, and I gotta say, uh, Councilor Lane, I owe you, uh, she bought me fudge and it was great. <laughs> I, I forgot my purse in the car. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> next time, um, I'll get you something, but we, it was so great to see people lined up and, um, just connecting with the businesses and seeing people who from, for the year, this is for them, that is their economic driver. And that is their, that is their way in which they are, you know, thriving uh, and building community. And it was, yeah, it, it was, a, it was a great culmination of things for small business. Um, I did also want to just focus uh, one a bit when we talk about sustainability planning and, and if people have things and thoughts for the future um, around budget 2022, right now we have consultation in, um, in progress. And a big part of that work is hearing from you. So one of the things I did want to just mention that right now, you know, the budget explains exactly where and how our city's funds will be distributed. So at what ways you would like it to better serve you uh, and what value and what matters to you most. So over the next two months, of course, council and myself, um, 
Uh, we'll be working with our senior staff to bring down a balanced budget and focus on the core services and, and building to our future. So it's so important that we hear from residents. And I just wanted to identify the, the, the website in which you can go, heymountpearl.ca, um, to learn more about how you can provide your feedback on budget. And, and we really do want to hear from you. Um, and it's so important that, you know, I know that all of our, 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 our colleagues here have heard so much about that at the door. And, and it, certainly that's top of mind when I think about the budget. Sustainability is absolutely top of mind about the budget. Um, but more importantly, it's, it's good to have your voice. So if you want to engage that way or connect with our, our, our city staff or colleagues here or myself, anytime you want to talk about that budget this is a great time to do so and uh, consultation is important and it's important that we hear from you so that's all for me well said deputy mayor and folks i i have nothing you talked about everything that's going on in the city um i look at their cao do we have a council meeting next week i think we do a public council meeting november 2nd yeah, so we're trying to line up our public meetings then to, we'll go back to bring down that meetings. budget that the deputy mayor uh, talked about. So committee meetings are in progress. I, I, I note today that I believe Councillor Antle attended a regional fire committee. Uh, I think you've had at least one or two committee meetings under your belt. We've had two council meetings. We begin the budget process tonight, deputy mayor, uh, with an overview from staff and uh, look forward to you along with Councillor Locke uh, leading us until to the point where we deliver that balanced budget come December. So on that note, I'm going to close the meeting, seeing there's no other business to be done. And it is moved by Councillor Fry and seconded by Councillor Antle. And we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank